the ASUS UX301LA. We have a no compromises Intel Ultrabook and we're gonna review it. First, the unboxing. ZenBook is ASUS word for an Intel Ultrabook. In the ASUS ZenBook style, the unboxing experience is a pleasant one designed to make you feel like you're buying a high-end and exclusive product. This particular model is the i5-4200U. It sports 8GB of RAM, a 256GB SSD, but it's actually a RAID 0 of two 128GB SSDs, and a 6-cell, 8-hour battery. It also has 802.11ac, Bang & Olufsen audio, integrated HD webcam and microphone, and some other neat features. In the box, we have a power adapter, a small bag of accessories that include a display port to VGA adapter for all the people out there that have to use VGA with the business conference room projector or whatever, a USB 3 to Ethernet adapter, and, you know, little things like that. Under the laptop itself, the laptop comes with a faux leather carrying pouch. Though a carrying pouch has been pretty standard fare with Asus ZenBooks, this one feels a lot nicer. Now, this particular unit has a 12-month warranty and is eligible for 12 months of accidental damage coverage. That's a handy program that can cover you if you accidentally damage your, your notebook somehow. But you should read the warranty coverage guide to know what the gotchas are and what the exceptions are and things like that. Basically, if you register the program and you're eligible for accidental the accidental protection, you're automatically enrolled. So it can be handy if you accidentally damage your laptop somehow. As for the laptop itself... It's got a deep, dark, purple, brushed metal finish, and the entire top is coated in Gorilla Glass, so it makes for an impressive aesthetic. On the right side is a full-size SD card slot, a USB 3 port, and a mini display port. Toward the front, you can see an opening, but that's one of the speakers. On the left side is another USB 3 port, micro HDMI, headphones, and a power jack. The audio on this model is Bang & Olufsen, and in our audio tests, it was an impressive sound, you know, for a laptop. This model also has a built-in HD webcam and a microphone, which makes video conferencing, Skype, Hangouts, and stuff like that a breeze. When you open the display, it's sort of curved at the bottom, and so it lifts the keyboard slightly because the, the display sort of goes under the laptop. This is kind of a nice touch as it changes the typing angle slightly and it angles the keyboard more toward you. Now, the best thing about this laptop is that it has a stunning WQHD 2560 by 1440 touch display. That's 13.3 inches like the previous models, but now it's touch enabled and it's insanely high resolution. That's the same resolution as like the 27 inch monitors that are running at 2560 by 1440, except it's in 13 inches. So this thing is also coated in Gorilla Glass, so it's scratch resistant. And on opening the laptop, we found that we, we've got this nice large cleaning chamois. And that's nice because the display being coated in the Gorilla Glass picks up fingerprints like crazy. Now the display, I think, has, a, has an oleophobic coating on it, so it doesn't pick up oil from your fingers as bad. But on the reverse side of the display, I mean, if you just hover your finger over the display, it's going to pick up a fingerprint. Now they've gone Gorilla Glass mad on this because the touchpad is also coated in Gorilla Glass. That really helps the uh, touchpad experience because it lowers the friction on the touchpad. And this touchpad is a real improvement over the previous generation. Not that there's anything wrong with the previous generation, but the touchpad experience on this after using it for a couple hours was really, really nice. It was not, it didn't do anything annoying and I accidentally brushed it a few times and the software seems like it's improved. So I found that to be a good improvement over prior year models. Now this thing has a RAID 0 SSD, meaning it's got two zeros striped in RAID 0, which gives you better read and write performance. So naturally, the first thing that we're going to do is run a disk benchmark on it. So we're getting about 750 megabytes per second. I suspect that one should probably buy the 512 gig unit because two 256 gig SSDs should have better performance than two 128s. At least when we've been testing 128 gig standalone SSDs, they're generally outperformed by the 256 gig SSDs. But still, 750 megabytes per second is nothing to sneeze at. Um, that's really fast, actually. Now, why would they do that? Why, why have they done that? Well, the reason part of it 
is that they want it to run like Grease Lightning. But the other reason is because this thing has 8 gigs of RAM and things like Hibernate, where Hibernate will write the contents of RAM to disk. And the Intel rapid response, rapid storage thing will actually do that to a partition. You know, in days gone by, Windows would do that to the Hibernate file in the root of the drive. But Intel, with their modern platform initiative and blah, 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 has decided that maybe that, that should happen on a partition. So uh, the system will write out the RAM to the partition and that means that it can be done sort of at a hardware level instead of at the Windows level. And so in order to do that, you want your disk subsystem to be as crazy fast as possible. And so that's one reason they've done that so that you can write out the RAM to disk really fast so this thing will go to basically a zero power usage sleep and wake up again really fast. And so here in our testing, we did some you know informal testing. It's like, let's go to hibernate and let's wake up and let's see what happens. It seemed to... <laughs> perform really fast. I mean, it would wake up in just a second or two. Now, the other thing that excited me was that I saw this DisplayPort interface and I thought, hmm. See, I, you know, confession time in case you guys didn't know, I'm a multi-monitor freak and I was a little disappointed in the previous ZenBook models that I couldn't hook up 11T monitors to the ZenBook at really high resolutions and actually have it work. So, this thing has DisplayPort, and I just happen to have this handy-dandy EVGA DisplayPort Hub. DisplayPort Hubs are still kind of rare, but EVGA has made one of the solid ones that is pretty reliable, works well. You know, they've, they've done their homework, yada, yada, yada. So I wanted to see if this thing could drive not one, but two 4K displays over DisplayPort. And the answer was no. But sort of. Actually, I can run two 4K displays off this laptop, one with micro HDMI, that's 4K at 30 hertz, and the other through DisplayPort, that works fine. But I wasn't able to use the DisplayPort hub and drive two 4K displays. That's not entirely unexpected. I mean, this thing doesn't have a dedicated GPU, and Intel is not really, you know, it's like, oh, it does support three 4K displays at a chipset level, or maybe it doesn't, I don't know. So you just sort of have to try it and, and see what it does. But lowering the resolution, you know, two 2560 by 1440 displays with the DisplayPort Hub, no problem. That was fine. That worked great. But two 4K displays was just pushing it a little too much on DisplayPort. But having this thing run two 4K displays, one on micro HDMI and one on DisplayPort, that worked great. And you could even still use the built-in display at the full 2560 by 1440 resolution. So if you want to run three displays on this thing, you totally can. The built-in and two super high resolution external ones, that's fine. That's not a problem. I was really glad to see that on this. Now, if you do need a little bit more GPU horsepower, this model is the UX301 LA, and it relies on the, I, the iGPU of the Intel i5-4200U to do the job. There's also the UX302 from Asus, which is a comparable model to this one. It's a little bit thicker, but it's got a dedicated NVIDIA graphics adapter. So we need to get one of those and test and see what it does, but it might have a little bit more graphics horsepower to be able to do some of the craziness that we want to do. But if you're only going to run one 4K display off of DisplayPort, or you're going to do 4K, two 4K displays each with its own output, you're fine. It works great. If you're going to run 2560 by 1440, multiple displays, whatever, it's fine. Just do it. So what's the verdict on this product? Well, in benchmarks, it's solid. The lack of the de dedicated GPU will hurt gaming performance, but the gaming performance from the Intel graphics is on par with what you'd expect from an Intel graphics solution. So my only recommendation is that if you get this, you get the 512 gig model so that you get the maximum possible SSD performance because everything else you get the hardware to use it here. This really does live up to both the Ultrabook and the Zenbook name. It is worthy of accolades. The only complaint I have is that I would really like to see a USB charging port on the power adapter. That's a really awesome feature. This thing should totally have that because it's a high-end exclusive product. It's great. Well, that's been the overview and review of the Asus ZenBook UX301 LA. Do you have one? If so, let us know what you think in our forum at techsyndicate.com. Rate, subscribe, and like. Until next time.